In this video, I would like to explain a little bit about a um, special location in a system. Um, and that special location is called the center of mass. And there are actually a few interesting properties of the center of mass in various situations. Okay, so the first is that even if we have a complicated situation, like the ones that I introduced previously, where we have multiple particles in a system, or maybe we have a like squishy object or something like a cloud that's able to move around in you know an irregular way, or if we have something like um, a, a rigid object that's allowed to rotate and tumble as it moves, um, that special location, the center of mass, is going to behave like a particle. Okay, so what I mean by that is that it's going to satisfy the sorts of things that we have learned about in the last six chapters. So um, momentum conservation, um, the acceleration of that, um, that center of mass is going to be related to the net force um, on it, um, and so on. So all of the rules that we've learned about for motion up to this point will be true for the center of mass of some system. Um, it's also the balance point. So if you have some object um, and you want to balance it, like let's say you take a hammer, um, and if you, this is kind of my sketch of a hammer, if you try to balance this on a finger, um, you'll have to balance it kind of here um, because the um, the head of the hammer is really heavy and the handle is pretty light. It's made of wood typically. Um, so the balance point is going to be kind of in the middle and that's where the center of mass is located. Okay. Um, so we'll see a little more why the balance point is um, the center of mass in um, chapter nine. But for now, um, you can kind of take my word for it that that's where that is. Um, and then finally, the center of mass is the weighted average position. Okay, so we talked about weighted averages in the last video um, and we're going to apply that concept now. Okay, so um, the weighted average um, for the position, so that's the position of the center of mass, is just going to be um, the position of each part. So like, let's say I have part one and part two, um, et cetera. But I want to weight those positions by the mass of each particle. So M1 for the first one, M2 for the second one, and so on. Um, but then I want to divide by the weightings. So these are mathematical weightings, which um, happen to be the mass in this case. So this is um, the formula for the center of mass, um, at least the X position of it. You could then repeat in the Y direction and the Z direction. Okay, so let's just do a quick example. Let's say that you have a coordinate system like this, and maybe at um, x equals two meters, you have one particle, and then over here at x equals eight meters, you have a second particle, okay? But the two particles are not equal. So one is going to have um, a four kilogram mass, and the other will have an eight kilogram mass. So if we want to find the center of mass of the system, what we do is we plug these values into the formula. So the position of the center of mass is going to be, well, the first position is two meters, and the weighting is four kilograms, okay? Um, and then the second one, is at eight meters, and the mathematical weighting for that one um, is eight kilograms. Okay, and that's it. If we had more particles, we would just keep going. Um, and then we want to divide that by the total weighting, which was four kilograms um, and eight kilograms. Okay, so I don't want you to get confused. When I'm saying weight, I'm talking about this mathematical concept that some things count more in the average and not the physical um, meaning of weight, which is the gravitational force. So we're actually using masses rather than um, physical weights for this. Although near the surface of Earth, you get the same answer either way. Okay, so if I plug these in, well, I'm going to get two times four is eight and eight times eight is 64. So I'll get 72 um, kilogram meters on top. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 12 kilograms. And so when I divide that out, the center of mass position is going to be six meters. Okay, so that's going to be closer to the eight meter um, position than to the two meter position because the eight kilogram mass is higher than the four kilogram mass. If they were equal, the average would be right in the middle, but because um, one is bigger, the average is going to be closer to that one. Okay, so that's the strategy. This is it um, in principle. The way that we calculate a center of mass is just by doing this weighted average of the positions. Um, you're not required to have taken Calc 2 in order to take this class, but this is an application where um, doing an integral comes in really handy. So um, we have this um, formula for the position. Um, I only wrote down the one for the X position, but there's no reason why we can't write down the full vector form. So the position of the center of mass, which is a vector, is going to be mass one times vector R1. So the mass times the position plus mass two times the position of vector two plus dot, dot, dot. Just keep going for each particle, divided by mass one plus mass two plus dot, dot, dot. So again, you just add up all of the um, positions, multiply by the masses, and then divide by the total mass. Um, I mentioned that calculus comes into play here. Well, what you can do if you have some situation where like, let's say you have some object like this, and you want to figure out where's the center of mass of this object. Well, what you can do then is you can say, all right, well, I'm going to split up this object into a bunch of little pieces like this. Um, and then I'm going to figure out what is the mass of each piece. So this will be mi, and the position of that will be xi. Um, and so since all the masses will be a little bit different, we tend to call this um, dm. Um, to indicate that it's a really small amount of mass, um, we don't know how much. And then what you can do then is you can just integrate. xcm is going to be the integral of the position r 
um, times the little bit of mass that is in that um, little sliver that we cut out of that shape. Um, but we also need to divide by the total mass, which is just the integral of dm. Okay, another way that we can write this is we can say, all right, well, maybe instead of dm, what I know is the density of each piece. So I can use, for instance, the volume or the area of the piece rather than just the, the mass. So if I do that integral on the bottom, I'm just going to get one over the mass out front, and then I can integrate the density, which may be a function of position. So we could have an object that is denser in one spot than in another spot, um, and then integrate with respect to volume. Okay, so if you've then gone on to take calc 4 or calc 5, then you've probably seen some expressions like this where you do volume integrals, and we can use that here um, in the calculation of the center of mass. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do that in this class because, again, you're not required to have taken calc 2, so you don't necessarily need to be able to do those integrals. But if you have done that, then this is a nice connection between what you've seen in calculus and what you're seeing in physics.